Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Mark Anthony's Music Picks. Today is episode 155 and it's been a little while for me. We are right in the dead of winter right now in late February and this time of year just makes me super sluggish. I live in the Northeast United States near Philadelphia and uh, it's just, it just gets so cold and bleak up here that my motivation as I move through the winter just goes like lower and lower and lower until you get one of those days where it's like 55, 65 degrees and you start to snap out of it. So I, I'll admit I'm like a little bit kind of like suppressed at this point, but I'm trying to I'm trying to push through it and get some content out there because I always feel better after I do a little bit of creative YouTubing. So I, I appreciate you joining me for today. I'm going to be reviewing uh, a label that I've had on my list for quite some time now. I have a, a draft in my um, in my laptop of like different episode ideas. There's probably 20 or 30 that are always sort of like on deck. And as I come up with an idea for like a label or an artist or a concept, I just keep adding tracks to them until I get to around five or six tracks and then I make the decision then to, to move forward with making an episode on it. But for today, I'm going to be featuring uh, the label Irenic, which is, I, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. The, the word Irenic uh, implies uh, striving towards peace. I, I learned this from reading Discogs. And uh, the label Irenic is run, uh, masterminded, curated by the... I would say famous modern day producer Roger Garrison. Roger has become in in probably the last five or six years one of my favorite producers of all time. I actually don't know how far back his catalog goes but if I had to guess I would say maybe 2010 would be when he started producing but I, I could be wrong on that. I do know that he started the label Irenic in 2017 and up until now it's still active. So if you like some of the tracks from this episode, they're, I think, relatively easy to get. You can go to yoyaku.io, the website, and get them there on the cheap. You can probably find them at Juno, Red Eye, Dex, etc. Like they're, they're very widely distributed. It's a, it's a very professional label. It reminds me very much like uh, uh, of the, the label Mosaic that Tim Humphrey and I reviewed in our episode last month. So if you like Tech House, if you like Dub Techno, if you like when those two styles are fused together, Irenic is definitely going to be the label for you. I will say if I look at the sound of Irenic and compare it to Mosaic, I think uh, Irenic has a little bit more chance taking. It's not as confined into the Dub Techno and Tech House realm as Mosaic is. And you'll see some of the maybe outliers in terms of genre as I move through this episode. I, I think I I chose like a, a well-rounded five records for this that are a pretty good representation of the sound that you can get on this label. So let's get started. I have five picks for you today and the first one I'm going to pick for you is ironically, not ironically, ironically not <laughs> not on the ironic label. Well technically it is but it isn't. So this is Roger Garrison's Faithful is the release, and it came out in 2012. And the reason that I'm saying that it's not on Irenic is this record that I have is on a label called Sudden Drop. And I guess Roger wanted to reissue this record because it's freaking awesome. He wanted to reissue it on his own label, Irenic. So there's also a 2019 version that has the exact same tracks on this. So the track. One track's called Faithful, and the one that I'm featuring is called Put the Record On. And if you listen to Put the Record On, man, this is some seriously dark underground stuff. It came out in 2012, and that's kind of like an odd year for dub techno. Like, I can't really think of what else was coming out back then. Maybe some Echo Space and Deep Chord were popular. But if I, if I look at the dub techno genre as a whole... You might, in, in the course of a year, I mean, really, if you look at your collection, if you're really into dub techno, I mean, how many records over a course over, over the course of one year are like super five star badass? I mean, maybe four or five, if you're being honest. So with that being said, I think put the record on is like right up there. Now, I guess maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't say that it's entirely dub techno because it's not. I would say this has like elements of deep techno and 
Yeah, maybe maybe like deep techno fused with dub techno, like maybe like some of Con Force's darker material. But the, there's a, um, a vocal sample in here where the guys say, put the record on. And the, uh, the bass line, when it hits in here, just has like a really deep, dark basement vibe to it. I mean, like if you're listening to this, like you theoretically should be at the lower level of the club in, in the space where it's dimly lit and everybody's getting wild. Now, I'm moving chronologically through this episode. So that was uh, 2012. Roger Garrison's put that record on, on Sudden Drop, reissued in 2019 on Irenic. Uh, but my next uh, chronological pick here is this really nice gem from a producer named Baz Amro. I might be mispronouncing that. I'll be honest with you, I don't have any other Baz Amro records, but that's totally cool with me. I spotted this record based on the review that I saw on Discogs for it, and I can't remember what the guy said, but the guy was basically freaking out about the A1 track, which which is called Chained. Um, it's It really is just one of those crazy club dub techno hybrids where, like, Basically, if, if you're dropping Chained, if you're dropping the A1 Chained in your set here, like you're ready to blow the room up. I mean, there, there's no other purpose for this track. There's, there's nothing gentle. There's nothing low key about this. This is on the very high energy end of the spectrum when it comes to dub techno. And I think it's also a great proof that you can never really stop flipping stones in the dub techno world a, a lot of these records are from producers that you may not have, have heard of before or that you may not follow but you always need to in my opinion if you're like a dub techno aficionado you always need to be willing to explore different names and just take a chance on somebody that you've never heard of because you just never know when you're going to find a gem like chained Moving up to 2019, pre-pandemic, Irenic in full effect here, and I'm going to feature another Roger Garrison record here. This is the Ibadi EP. I've mentioned before that I tend to always sample records that have purple cover art because that's my favorite color. <laughs> um, I'll admit, I bought this record just for one track. Uh, Roger did four dub techno actually actually no there there's three dub techno tracks on here and one tech house track and i actually bought it for the tech house that he kind of snuck in on the b2 the track is called refugees 2009 version and i was i was curious i was like well is, is there like a, a 2008 version or some other earlier version that i should check out too and i wasn't able to find one so 
I don't know, maybe he had, he had multiple versions of refugees and he only issued this one. But if you listen through A, A1, A2, and B1, I have absolutely no complaints. I would say it's more traditional dub techno sounds. And, and when I say traditional, maybe uh, something along the lines of uh, maybe like a producer like Gradu, where he, he just tends to, in his older tracks at least, used to work with the traditional dub techno palette. Uh, like I said, absolutely no complaints here. When I listen to this, I'll usually just go like from all through the A side and then mark, work my way to the B side, knowing that my favorite track is at the end. And when you get to B2 here, Refugees 2009 version, for me, it, it all comes down to that super sick bass line. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. When I was a producer or, or try, an aspiring producer, I never was a producer. I always had a hard time getting my bass lines to sound like anything that just didn't sound like complete trash. So when a producer comes and, and drops like a little three note bass line like this, that uh, somehow just like perfectly melds with the track and stands out from like hundreds of other tracks in the same genre. It's like, how did they do that? How did he, how did he write the perfect bass line? And it kind of flashes me back to another record that has a very similar vibe. Uh, if you think of uh, Conforce's Dystopian EP, which is on Delcine, that's one of the best Delcine records of all time in my opinion. I mean, that's that's like top five. There's a track on there, I think it's the B2, it's called Vacuum, and I talked about it in my Conforce episode, if, if you wanna search my channel for Conforce, but that also has a ridiculous, nasty, like, baseline that's very similar in vibe and, uh, and simplicity and also like effectiveness. It's like, it's only three notes, but somehow the the roundness of the sound and it, it like doesn't compete with the kick. It like sits nice with the kick, if that makes sense. It doesn't it doesn't hit too hard, but it just gives it that like ooh, <laughs> the ooh. You can't help but make the ooh face when you listen to it because it's just like it's just that great. <laughs> Now, I mentioned in the episode when it started that Irenic is not specifically confined to Tech House and Dub Techno. They take some chances with some of the producers, especially if you listen to the, the various artists' uh, releases, like the, the, the SPC or Special series. I kind of just bought this, not knowing anything about the producers on it, but I like the sample. I also really, like, check out this cover art, man. Got like the cityscape and the red on gray and black. Like this is, this is effing, this is great. I guess I'm getting a cold right now. But uh, the track I wanted to feature on here is by, I'm looking at this cause like, I'm like, who the hell is this? Verbo Pluriel. He's on the A1 and he has a track called Fullness. And I didn't realize it when I bought it, but the track's like 12 minutes and 30 seconds long. So it's gotta be, this has gotta be the longest track that's on the entire label. I don't think there's anything else on here that's on on Irenic that's that's over 12 minutes. I mean, that's crazy long. And I was I was thinking like, well, how am I even going to describe this track? I know I like it. After I listened to it three or four times and kind of like preparing for this episode, I'm like, you know what? It kind of reminds me of Thomas Melchior. I don't know if it is him. It wouldn't surprise me if it was, but it, the um, there's a, a female vocal sample in it where the girl says fullness, and it kind of has a reverb on it. That's exactly something that Melchior would do. And, and I'm saying that based on the fact that I have like 30 Melchior records. So like I know how he likes to drop vocal samples in there. 
maybe this is an alias for him. Maybe it is. But another uh, piece of the track that I noticed is that there's a really low key uh, sample. And I it, it, it kind of sounds like Border Community. If, if you listen to James Holden's uh, The Sky Was Pink, the, the James Holden remix of Sky Was Pink from Border Community, it has that like video game plinky plunky melody. And that track, that element is, it's almost like a sample of that is is featured in here. Or it's maybe like the same synth or tool. I, I don't even know what the heck it would make that sound. But that's featured in here. And I think the parallels to Border Community are also reflected in the other tracks that are on here by the other artist named Meadow. Like I, I was just getting like a Nathan Fake 2004 Border Community vibe from listening to the whole thing. But this is another great example of Irenic just kind of taking chances and putting out quality music. I can't give you a genre description for it. Deep, ambient, tech, house, something. I don't know, but it sounds great. And my fifth and final pick for this episode, I appreciate you hanging out with me for this long, is this one here, another lovely purple on gray cover art. Kind of looks like a drone, like a drone footage of a cul-de-sac somewhere. Some like cool flowers here. I, I absolutely love this. Like this is almost like wall hanging art for me. And this is Jay Tripwire's Mr. Rogers EP. If you look at Irenic on Discogs, you'll see that it, it basically says that the for the EPs, not the special EPs where it's various artists, but for the individual artist EPs, they're named after people that were powerful in the human rights movement. And this is named after Mr. Rogers, the... Uh, the famous, uh, I guess, children's show host. And I remember watching Mr. Rogers as a kid, and, you know, there there was definitely, like, a really weird, innocent magic about his show that, you know, kind of like with Bob Ross and the painting, where you just, you're just never going to recreate that again because it was, it was such, like, a, a unique piece of, like, television production art, basically. But my, my, tr my choice on here is the track A1. It's called Voices. Uh, the artist is Jay Tripwire, and, you know, my perception of Jay Tripwire before I made this episode, I was like, I'm pretty sure that guy's from California. I, I don't know why, but I, I it's like I knew almost from his sound that he was just, he was a West Coast guy. And then I, I looked him up on maybe Wikipedia or something like that, and I was like, oh, he's Canadian. I must have been wrong. But then I realized he's actually from the West Coast of Canada in Vancouver, so... It, it kind of makes sense, like for him to to travel down the West Coast, like to, to maybe Portland or uh, somewhere in California would have been like completely within reason. So I think he kind of like does represent the early 2000s West Coast American house and tech house sound very well. Jay Tripwire has been doing tracks since 2000. And he's still active now. Like the guy puts out a lot of music, and you can almost throw a dart if you if you like After Hours Tech House, or if in the early two thousands you like that more like West Coast vibe, like that Mark Mark Farina, Joey Youngman type vibe. Uh, you can also get that from Jay Tripwire, but he he really knows what he's doing. I mean, that man is well accomplished in the studio, and like I said, you can roll the dice on almost anything that he's done. And you're probably, you're going to get at least a four-star track somewhere on any of his EPs. And like I said, my voice, my choice, not my voice here, my choice here is a track called Voices. It's got 
just the like the classic J trip wire dark dirty 3 a.m kind of tech house vibe like i said it's it's for those like tight little underground spaces where maybe there's 50 or 100 people in a smaller room and it's set up in some kind of like makeshift environment and everybody's just getting down until five six in the morning that that's what you're getting here lots of uh, representation in the track in the in the mid range of the track and it has like a, a dance floor energy that not a lot of producers can can recreate, but I think J Tripwire really nailed it here. This concludes my Irenic episode. Thank you for listening with me. I also want to say thank you to Mr. Roger Garrison. I love the label. You're putting out really high quality vinyl. I love the cover art and the attention to detail. I know that I can buy an Irenic record and it's going to sound great when I put it on my turntable. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the affordable prices and I'm glad that you reissued and repressed some of the more rare in the last year or so. That's that's definitely helped me expand my Irenic collection. That's all for today and take care, peace. Oh, yeah, it's all about us,